Welcome to the map meeting stream in BFME1 on the page 2.22 for a video commentary in a good against evil matchup between Gondor and Isengard. Urupid opening into the tower, that's pretty uh, defensive opening, but this also means that if you lose your Lambian Mills outside, you will be actually starving to death, you will have no money. And Barak's opening without a blacksmith, also very questionable, because without blacksmith, your upgrades will be super delete. Your Forge Bleeds, Heavy Armor, and also the Banner Carrier. But it's a small map, you know, which kind of favors the good factions a lot. Alvin Wood will be pleased, and Isengard doesn't bother fighting this. So he will, up, he will give up the settlement for free, which he should always demolish to get some money back, and also deny experience from the soldiers. Very important. But he's not demolishing it, he will not get any money back, because I believe he is trying to stall, so they need a bit longer time to reach out to the settlement. And the soldiers already rushing forward. In the meantime, Vorchan has been used on these two Uruks. And it's revenge time, boys. The soldier going to the top side. But losing these buff farms for Gondor will mean his steel will, will be super delete. The Uruk trying to defend against the soldier. He should always be able to win the one-on-one -on -one situation. Because the eco from Aizen is not looking too hot. And also, he's about to lose this Lambert Mill at the top side. So Barak's opening gives you more presence at the beginning of the game with the con, which will delay your stable, and that will make your mid-game a bit weaker. Farm taken down, farm taken down. But Condor is still this two farms under his control, which is pretty good. The level two farms will give you more money than this level one farm. But he has only three eco buildings, which means also Gondor's eco is not looking too hard. Look at the money from Gondor, he has 747 and I believe he will rush the stable now with only one farm inside the base. But he has three farms outside, it means he has still the 15% food bonus, making his knights cost 15% less. Tell the knights, the stables are ready, boys. The knights will be there very, very soon. The slammer mill in the middle will be taken up with the hobbit and the soldier. And Gondor player stopped recruiting more soldiers because he couldn't afford the knights and the soldiers simultaneously. So the mid game will be poor for Aizen. But remember, Isengard is the, is the one faction which has the highest comeback potential in the game. Because you get fast industry normally. You can creep, you have very strong pikemen. So your mid game as Aizen should be pretty strong. Warchant, but the Uruks badly damaged, the Hobbit level 3 hitting like an absolute truck and the Uruks will be cleaned off. And for Gondor it will be kinda good to save this level 3 soldier. It can be super useful for later on when Isengard will spam lots of pikemen upon the field, you know? This farm will be saved by the Knights of Gondor. Trample them! I should be good, should be good. There was a needed trample by the way. Okay, more knights have been recruited. One more knight required for the stable to hit level 2. And you can also keep producing more and more soldiers. But it's easier said than done. The slumber mill will be taken down. Aizen has pikemen up on the field. And industry will be used on the building up furnace. And that's how the eco from Aizen looks like. He has a Uruk with level 3, yes. But he has no eco inside the castle. And his opponent has also not the greatest eco because they are trying to pressure the map a little bit more. So Gondor creeping this with the one knight and the other knight will be pressuring this Lambert mill over there, which is super important. When you see this as Gondor, your natural reaction should be always to recruit soldiers to counter the pikemen, you know? This is a very strong area with the level 3 hobbit and level 3 soldier. You will need multiple berserkers, actually. That's a very risky move from Gondor. Aizen has no vision, but, you know, I think he's assuming that he's creeping this, which he should always be able to intercept. Or, maybe not. Uh, Gondor is gonna take it. Oh my god. At least he got one part of the money, though. That's not bad, I guess. And he has now 
two Lambert Mills under his control. We'll have like in total three very very soon. And he was also able to creep this uh, Leia at the top side with the Berserker in the Pikeman combination with the Warchant. And with the Industry, he will up, he will be able to fill up the base quite fast too. So now you need to just make the mix of Berserker and the Uruk Pikeman, which is countering the Knights of Gondor, but also the Soldiers of Gondor. We have still the creep at the bottom side, which will be taken down now by the Knights of Gondor from Fishy. And he went for the heal, which is super questionable, because it will delay your ranger summon quite a lot. Usually you go for the Elvin Wood and try to rush 3 power points to get to the Great Company special summon as soon as possible. But in this case, he wanted to go for the heal. And he has now 2 power points. If he didn't go for the heal, he would have the power points now for the Great Company. Those small mistakes, I mean, maybe not mistakes, but th those small decisions you make throughout the entire game can actually determine the change, uh, the, 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 the future and the destiny of the gameplay, you know? Like, imagine you summon the rangers right now. How devastating that would be for Aizen. He has nothing to counter this. He has, he's far away from getting anywhere close to war riders. He's far away from getting anywhere close to the lords. And all he can have offer are a couple of pikemen. And he has Warchan on cooldown too. So with the rangers, you could clean the whole map. And then get power points with them anyway for the heal. And now you lose map control because you didn't do this, you know? Those small mistakes should be avoided. The slumber mill will be going down. And remember, there is no blacksmith level 2 yet because he didn't start with a blacksmith at the beginning of the game. But he's going for Boromir. I respect that actually. The captain of Gondor has been recruited. By the way, guys, sorry for my voice. I was sick for the last five days, you know, flu, big flu. It's called Scharlach in German, in Germany. Thanks to my daughter, who is always coming sick home from the kindergarten, you know what I'm saying? Look at the minimap, boys. Fishy has it all. But Eisen doesn't need that much map control. You have three mills, four mills, you should be good to go. The mills producing more money because you have workers, which are working super fast. And uh, they get good payment, I guess, you know. Be careful there. Warp pit coming up now. Mm, at this point of the game, I, I might actually... I would maybe consider to not go for the Warpit anymore, you know, and just make Uruk Pikeman combination, which are also pretty strong against soldiers, and also against Pike, um, and also against horses, you know. Or you can go for Lords. Lords always a great choice when it comes to the lead game situation, and this game looks like it would go for the lead game. Boromir, the captain of Gondor, Pike Killer. He is called the Pike Killer. The worker is scouting, I like it. Industry, level 3 furnace, full steel bonus, getting very cheap upgrades. The works without upgrades, what can they do? And again, when you see works as Condor, you can also combine your soldiers with tower guards to counter them. The trade-off is you lose movement speed. He's using Warchant on the Spikeman, but even with Warchant, Boromir won't get damage too hard because he's able to knock you down on the ground every single time and without having you need to surround him with like two battalions at bare minimum otherwise he will just win every one one situation that's gonna be the first beast rush with the great company and the two knights of condor heavy armor and force blades purchase but no shields which will which means they have less durability against arrows lords in the front line has to be careful he's only level one level five knights of condor heal will be used beautiful healing coming and the rush keeps happening Knights of Condor quite tanky, each level will make you more durable and also make you deal more damage. The Great Company now should be moving, you know, don't feed power points here for no reason to your opponent. Armory upon the field, he demolished the work pit and I believe he has only one work rider from what I can see, which is definitely not enough. But it's enough to do the job on the Alvin Wood in cleaning up those soldiers. The Great Company has now been gone from the Middle Earth as every furnace is hitting level 2 and eventually will hit level 3, which will make the Isengard bees way more durable and tanky. Works are... Reco oh, he has two battalions, never mind. I'm blind, sorry. Um, Stable level 2, he has three knights, he didn't lose any one of them yet. And Boromir has to be also around somewhere. But now when Lourdes, especially when Lourdes gets level 3, you need to be careful. 
Because Lourdes is a Boromir killer, you know? Just like in the films. When he cripples you with level 3 and has carnage, he will always win. Because his carnage is countering Boromir's passive knockdown. It will grant him the knockback resistance. Which will make him immune to that, you know? Warzhen has been used on his level 2 pikeman. And... The map is still looking very good for Gondor. Boromir, by the way, is level 5. He has the Horn of Gondor stand, that's pretty good. And what is the plan now for Gondor, though? That's the big question. He went for his shields. So we are assuming he will go for another beast rush very, very soon. This beast rush, he will become super tanky. And the arrows won't hurt him that much. Unless he's coming from this area with the level 3 furnace. But you can see the damage from the arrows against uh, knights with this much upgrades is not very really significant so you need to be shot in the face for a very long duration and that won't be the case forge plates and banner has been purchased and he's still missing the heavy armor and the fire upgrade so three power points on top of that what he has already and two of them will be invested into the gan of the white gan of the white will be recruited very very soon coming from the citadel and a wizard as you guys know arrives precisely when he means to And in late game, the Vorgs have no chance. Ooh, nice micro from Gondor though. Ooh, be careful! Banner! Shoot! Oh my god, one more shot and level 4 would be going down. Or he was forced to be used uh, to use the heal. And Gandalf has been recruited. Now here is the thing, when your Lourdes is level 1, Gandalf's Easter will one-shot you actually, you know? So when you can't kill him, and with this army you definitely can't kill him. So Gandalf could just ride out there and kill your lords, which would be a huge punishment. And he, oh, he gets knocked down on the ground. Boromir is bullying lords, unlike in the films. And he now will, there was a nice beat from Fishy. And there comes the Mifrandia, the white rider. And Boromir has been crippled. Can he be saved though? Unlike in the films, there is a Gandalf this time, using the lightning sword to save the captain of Gondor. And he's all about to hit level 6 too. But in the meantime, Aizen was able to take a lot from the map. He has plenty of settlements, 1, 2, 3, 4 Lumber Mills, which grants him 25% wood bonus. He had 5 actually, that's why. Um, the wood bonus is not very important in the mid game when your base is already filled up. But it's super important at the beginning of the game to fill up your base way cheaper. He's already towered up everything. He's playing it very safe. Level 3 furnace around this location. Level 2, level 2, level 2. All of that good stuff. Lourdes has to be revived. It will take you 1 minute and 45 seconds to do that. And Ganov can actually farm power points during the absence of Lourdes. The glow means he picked the field of fires, which will make him gather 75% more resources from the lumber mills. And Isengard is like the eco faction, right? Nobody can compete with the Isengard eco. You have devastation, industry, field of fires, and your lords has also pillage with level six. So all of that combined, you will grow rich, and you will, with like equal map control to your opponent, you will have always more money than him. But that's a trade-off because evil factions have no summons, unlike good factions, which can summon great company, eagles, Rohirrim, elves, ants, and so on. But it's time to make a huge army now, you know, for Aizen. Very important. I like the way that Aizen and Gondor is, you know, able to demolish or destroy these Lambert Mills over and over again, denying them from reaching to level 2 or level 3, which would make them give you even more money. And Ganalf is on the hunt on this war riders. What you can always do when it's available, you can use Eastery. It's a point and, click, point and click ability. It can't miss the target, even if the target is far, far away. Once you start casting it, it will always connect. Boromir was able to capture the outpost at the top side of the map. That's good. Ooh, be careful there. Oh my god, man. The pikemen, what are they doing there, bro? Do it, Gandalf. Okay. 
can touch this dude now nah, easily like mentioned before point and click it won't have the same splash damage like the visa blast but again it will just give you the chance every minute to collect power points and that's how you can use Gandalf in all games use him as a power point generator okay oh moonwalking can touch this dude, 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 dude. hey bro what are you doing there just press s you know the lumber mill will be taken now but Eisinger is gathering an army but my lord there is no such force you need thousands tens of thousands and then the Eisinger music's playing do, 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 do. There was not the Isengard music, which I can't play by the way, because of the copyright. So Vorgs are upgraded, that's pretty good. What you also need is, of course, Saruman, very important hero. The outpost has no protection or whatsoever, you know. And also now Marketplace for Gondor, which could be also a great investment into the late game. I usually like to go for the Marketplace in any matchup, when you go after Gandalf, you know, that's it can be the one thing you can do first. So you get Gandalf and then you go for the Marketplace, just to have the in insurance, you know, that you will have always good eco. That's a strong army though, with Warchan only. Now, without Warchan, this army has no leadership, and leadership is essential, a uh, very essential part of this gameplay. In BFME 1 it is, you know. Gandalf rides to Isengard. Like in the films, boys. Okay. But the army from Isen is not that mobile, you know? That's the problem. You can't really follow up. So, um, you need to always leave some defense in your castle. If you do what he just did, you, you will leave your base kind of open for a potential invade. And when this three, four battalions of knights come with the Ganaf leadership, armor leadership, they can actually stall the towers and tank the towers for a very long time and take half your base down. Boom, chakalaka. Like, I'm, like, said, like I said before, boys. Powerpoint generator. Ooh. It's a level five uh, horse, by the way. Super tanky with the shields and heavy armor. And of course, the leadership from Ganaf, which you can see in this palantir. He will give you 50% armor and 50% combat experience. We overall nerfed the combat experience quite a lot um, in 2.2. Also from Drummer Trolls, Eye of Sauron, all of that stuff has been tuned down. Um, but without the soldier spam and the soldier tower guard combination, you can't really keep the map against Aizen that much as Gondor. Because your knights can fight them through, but Aizen can just upgrade your, his pikemen, you know. When, when Aizen gives the pikemen blades and armor, they will always win the 1v1 situation in the porcupine formation. Unless your horse is level 10 or you have like armor leadership or something, you know? Lord's level only 2, that's the problem. You need to get still 2.5 more levels for the leadership, which is essential for mid lead game. When it comes to Kirgana, when it comes to burst down the eagles, you want to have him level 5. Because eagles already unlocked from the spellbook of Gondor, that's pretty powerful. It's a one one fight against pikemen. You can see the pikemen are actually able to deal a lot of damage to Ganaf. So that's why you shouldn't fight them in a one-on-one. -on -one. And he, he, he never put them in the porcupine formation too. If you put them in the porcupine formation, they are immune to be trampled. Send out your Vork riders. What I like to do here is I'd like to recruit Sharku and send him with the Vorks. So... He can share experience with them and get level 3, which will unlock his leadership, you know? And give more armor to the uh, Vorks. So one Vork Rider with the whole ability and the leadership from Sharku can actually 1v1 the Knight of Gondor with full upgrades. Lords using the Carnage to kill the Rangers. Getting experience over there, beautiful. And getting very close to level 4 too. That's pretty nice actually. But the army is following a huge army following couple of rangers which are gone now anyway so now power points collected so so far we have not seen a big clash yet between the armies condor army is at the top out outpost boromir is leading them you know rangers combos and he has also the tower guard archer combination so this army has leadership from boromir which is 60 percent damage leadership and with a statue you can actually increase the damage leadership even more with the well you can give them sustain and recovery so they should not be underestimated, but the enemy army has now Saruman. Remember, 
Eisen didn't go for a freezing ring. It means leadership from his opponent can't be denied, can't be nullified. And if he, if he goes for the freezing green, it will delay his uh, Balrog quite a bit too, you know? That's the problem there. Ooh, Saruman is getting bullied. Actually, eagles are coming. Fireball before he died. No, he, kid he couldn't. Oh my god, the eagles are actually going down very, very quickly. Now, in the land. Ooh, the eagles actually go. That's like four combos there, I think, you know? And did he use Warchan? I think he didn't. Not sure, though. They are not glowing, so I think he didn't, but it's four combo shooting, and the eagles are super squishy, they are all about raw damage, they can destroy heroes in two seconds, but they also die in two seconds in exchange, uh, the last thing you want to see are tanky eagles, you know, <laughs> when eagles will be tanky bro, they will be kind of horrible, like, they one shot you and you can't kill them back, siege works, so, okay, I will tell, I will talk, Talk about the lead game situation about this matchup for a second, okay? So in the lead game, when you play good against evil, it's very important for the good faction to control the outpost against Aizen, but also against Mordor. Super important. Because when Isengard gets the chance to control both the outpost for a long time, it means that his Balrog has only one mission left, and it's about destroying your castle. Which Balrog can so single-handedly do, by the way, you know? Now, this base will be super durable, don't get me wrong. It's a level 3 steeple, it's all about hit level 3 archer range and a level 3 barracks. So, this level 3 production buildings, they will not get one shotted. But what Balrog can always do is um, Brave Fire like this to break the gate. You know, break the gate, open the gate so your army can invade. And the combination of the uh, Brave Fire with the Ignite, of course, and then the Whip after can actually finish also the level 3 production building. So what you can do is you can get summoned here, you destroy the Zita, Brave Fire like this, the Zita will have like, uh, the Steeple will have like some HP left, and then you Whip the Zita. Ooh, beautiful trample, actually. The Ballista will be killed though. Yanov is coming from behind, has to be careful, there is a cripple potential from Lourdes. Um, when you play this matchup with uh, Aizen, you always want to save up the cripple for Yanov after he's on the field, unless he's dead, of course, you know? So never ever <laughs> cripple Poro when there is a Yanov who's alive. Saruman, will not be cast aside. Saruman is back on the menu, boys. 10 power points for Aizen and 6 power points for Gondor. So only 4 power points away from the ultimate summon, which is the Offbreakers. Um, and you need to be careful about that one, you know? They will almost eat Ganalf. So just use the Easter there. Ooh, nice dodge. Army is rotating, there is one Ballista. If you give Ballista like four sho 5 shots, I believe it takes to break the gate. Or like 6 shots to break the part of the wall. So Siege has been made easier. So the, the walls are not that tank anymore. Ooh. Nah, okay, he's cancelling it. He was he was trying to beat him because the cripple has a limited range. And if the target is out of the range, you will miss it. Ooh, be careful there with the ballista. Nice blast. Do not touch my tralala. -la. My ding ding dong. <laughs> Lord's getting bullied there by the knight, by the way. Level 9 knight almost one shot at Lord's there. Holy. Look how tanky they are, dude. Did he use Warchant? No, he didn't. They are so tanky. Ooh! No, 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 no! I mean, he destroyed the Ballista at least. <laughs> you know, that's not good, bro. Like, the Eagle play over there was not very good either, I think, you know? Ooh! He break. Oh, never mind, he broke the Git. I was thinking of it's a, you know, Git rush, but it's not. Does Condor have money though? He doesn't have that much money to build expansions. He's only building one trebuchet expansion which Saruman can always fireball, but it's on cooldown. And the beast will fall now. Condor is going for the outpost. Almost 8 power points in the bank. If the catapult, tre I mean trebuchet can shoot, it will hit, deal hella damage. Lord's level 5 too. Eight we need to now take a look into the power points. His double trap from both the sides, they will shoot. Oh my god, the power points are going up for Gondor, boys. Can he get it? Can he get the AOD? I think he can. But can he before the beast falls? 
The blacksmith is going down. This devil is going down. Oh, he needs to use it. He has to. He needs to use it. Yeah, yeah, you use it. Oh my god. Oh boy. <laughs> this devil level three saved him. <laughs> It's only because he lost the horses, you know. Usually you don't get to see Stable level 3 that often because he was spamming horses as he lost them, you know. <laughs> That's the reason why it's level 3, which is the main thing that kind of saved them. But remember the evil factions are designed to get power points from losing stuff too. Uh, for that reason, he needs only half a power point for his own uh, Balrog. And here's still an army. That's what you can, what you always need to do. I like this double Uruk pit strategy, by the way. Look, he's 11,000. This is super important and also super needed that you need to play with multiple production buildings because in the super late game against Gondor it's super annoying to win with only Uruk Pit because you will have too many summons. You have Eagles, Rohirrim, Rangers, EOD and you need like production, you know, mass production because there is no such thing as feeding anymore when your opponent has already unlocked the EOD. It's a mistake, sir. It's a mistake, sir. Eagle gives hella power points and now the Balrog of Morgoth has been unlocked from this spell book. Now we are talking. Now we are, now we are talking. I mean, I like this, bro. That's fierce the game, isn't it? Okay. So he needs to wait now for the level 5 Lords for 2 minutes and 30 seconds and for the level 6 Saruman for 3 minutes. Each level, I mean, not each level, but the higher the level, the more punishment in, in terms of recruit time. Revive time, rather. And I believe Gandalf was... I like that's a smart move, reviving Gandalf from the outpost, actually. I like it. They will eat Gandalf almost. Ooh, son! I'm a demon of the ancient world. Oh my god, he couldn't get in. But he can fly again. Fly like a butterfly, stitch like a bean. Who now is a string to fight against the mighty Balrog? Wow. Diablo. <laughs> El Diablo. <laughs> <laughs> Trevish, don't hurt yourself, bro. I mean, imagine him not finishing off the castle. That would be kind of the worst possible thing what could happen to this Isengard. Um. And the base has fallen, and the only remaining thing for Gondor is the outpost at the top side. And Isengard is 7.6k to buy the castle. Gondor has not that much money, bro. Gondor has not that much money. It's the unfortunate part, but he has map control. He has one, two... Ooh, the trample! Cloud break two, ooh, the stun! Right now, right for ruin in the red zone. You need to keep trampling. You can't fight like this. They have leadership. They have lords and Saruman there and Vorchand, so they are quite tanky. But Gondor is like level three farms over there. You know, these are very important farms. These three farms he has level three will give him hella money in his. Eco is going up because he has no more production building. That means he is not producing any more units. All the money he's getting, he's saving just to be able to rebuy the castle, you know, at some point of the game. So, uh, EOD. Oh my god, don't get in like this. What are you doing? Oh, the Rangers are hurting. Does he have rain though? No, he doesn't have rain. Dude, this leadership here should not be underestimated, by the way, guys. He has Boro leadership there with level 7. He can also use the Fort Gondor ability. He should be using it immediately. Use it! Oh, boom! Where is the Cripple Lords? It's in Afghanistan. The statue? Look at this damage, I'm telling you, the rangers that are inside, holy, they're eating everything! Uh, oh, the cripple? Okay, what can you... Actually, it saved Boromir the fireball, what? Never mind. <laughs> level 5, but you need to be careful, bro. These rangers, I think they are level 25 or something inside. Um, what Ice needs to do, of course, is map control, you know? Use the Vorix like he does, very important, very smart. There is a level 5 um, horse. And the level 3 ranger recovering around this area 
and here's still um, this level 3 combo and this level 3 ranger plus the ranger inside the outpost too and AOD was used before Balrog that means he has now the chance to kind of stall the game out for a little bit he has 3k, he still needs 2k but losing this level 3 farms will kind of put him behind beautiful blast level almost 9 gun after white boys that's super nice, I like it He's gonna use the Easter, it's gonna bring him very close to level 9. Ooh, what a hit. Okay, so what's the plan here? Um, like playing this game, like Rangel and also Fishy, they have they are experienced players, right? They are playing this game and they have like a feeling about the PowerPoint recharge time too. So they now, I mean Rangel now needs to kind of have the feeling, okay, EOD must be back up and he needs to split up the army. There comes the Palantir. What you want to do is run into different directions just like the way he does. But, oh my god, dude. Playing against Condor lead game must be fun, bro. <laughs> but sorry, man, is Speedy Gonzalez sing out. The jiggle around the, around the base. Fireball the eagle. You need to fireball the eagle. I, your stuff is broken. Ooh, level nine and a half, boys. Getting so much EXP for killing Saruman. Getting out the wizard bonus, you know. Grabbing his own stuff. Sharko is level three. Has the leadership for the works for more armor. But what can Sharko do against mighty giant eagles? And Condor is 4.2k. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And you see, every 6 minutes 30, every 5 minutes 30, every 5 minutes 15. So you get to fight against summoned stuff. And it's not like the time is not even accurate because, you, yeah, it's 6.30 but they are there for a minute. And the cooldown starts from the second you summon them. So realistically speaking, they have like 5 minutes 30 seconds cooldown. <laughs> These guys have only 4 minutes cooldown because they have remaining time in uh, on the field for a minute and 30 seconds you know so all of that have to be taken into consideration consideration and gondor was just able to buy the beast back too that's kind of crazy isn't it oh the army is not fritz bro oh my god no 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 it's gonna use the rain to counter the freezing rain uh, to counter the cloud plague i mean sorry like here, here is the mistake you want to keep trampling Trample damage is more significant. They have no pikemen around, so you just trample, 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 trample. What makes trample damage is uh, so good is because it deals more damage in your basic attack, first of all. And second of all, you knock them down on the ground, even if you can't one-shot them. You actually stole... Oh my god. The Rohirrim summon. Cleaned up everything, my man. In this level 3 farms too. Tower, Lord Saruman, both dead. But remember, the Balrog is available. Oh, never mind. He summoned the Balrog, actually. My bad. I'm blind. Balrog taking care of the outpost only. Maybe he didn't. Uh, I think he noticed that the base has to be. Uh, I think he saw that the base has been captured again by Gondor. Ooh, the King's Landing, bro. Ah, uh, here's no more time. Urukai. And give them banner, bro. These dudes. Just give them banner. So they can. That's a whole battalion of Urukai crossbow man combo. Give them banner, they can respawn over time. Saruman is almost back on the field, too. Level 7, though. That's pretty good. I, I like that one. And Ganoff is level 10. Uh, oh my god, we will see War of Power in action, too. What is this game, man? It's kind of ultra fiesta. Ultra fiesta game. Blast them, Ganoff. Aizen is not super rich anymore because he just lost like an army worth of like 5,000 there for no reason. It's a regular war rider by the way. It looks like Sharko though. <laughs> I was like, what the heck? It's regular war rider. You shall not go home. Uh, what an overkill. Ooh, uh, fireball. So, even now, Gondor has zero production, build production buildings. And in reality, he's at 12 command points out of 250 available command points. It means that's the only unit he has on the field. 
only one knight because this ranger got killed got killed before and i believe i also believe that baldrog was able to kill the level 3 combo so gondor has to play with 1000 just barely able to fill up the base and one level 7 knight of gondor and of course the one man army himself gan after white and that's a that's a big ouch there you know losing this level 3 farm like this kind of hurts I mean, this army is pretty strong, by the way, you guys don't underestimate this army. Saruman plus Lords, it's armor plus leadership plus war chant. They can two shot gain off there with this much DPS. Sharku, level 3. Sharku's level 6. The My Vork is hungry, is super strong. It will make him deal hella damage. But of course, it's not easy to get him to level 6, you know, unless you recruit him kind of early. But in lead game, it's super difficult. I mean, Eisenberg is controlling almost the whole map, so... And remember, the thing is, um, I will show you something. <laughs> Watch this. You see this? The workers have to walk, like, very long distance to kind of harvest trees. Because the longer the game goes on, the more of the trees around your structure will be harvested. And you need to walk a very long distance. So it's, I think, safe to say that... Ooh, why, 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 why? Uh, oh, that's so... That's a mistake, sir. That's a mistake, sir. Like, like there was like wasted eagles. Like at this point, you just summon EOD and do this. But the problem is, now I will have to criticize Fisher a little bit. You know, um, there is no need for you to kill this army, and that sounds maybe wrong. But hear me out. So the thing is, you killed the army. That's great. But what now? What what what's gonna happen now? What you're gonna achieve after that one? You summon the Rohirrim and go for the base, but you could have done this before because the army was here anyway, right? So what did you achieve from the summon of the EOD? That's how you wanna always ask yourself, okay, I'm gonna summon the EOD now, but can I do damage after I've summoned them? After I killed this army with my EOD, what is the damage I can do to him, you know? That's the golden question right there. Eisen, by the way, has both outposts. Again of level 10, we have not seen him using the War of Power just yet. And Balrog will be available in about 20 seconds. And when the outposts are under control from Aizen, what will happen is Gondor will be defeated. Because the beast is super fresh beast, only level 2 barrack, uh, stable. That means everything inside the beast is one-shotable for Balrog. And you will lose your castle. And unlike last, last time, you have no map control to rebuy the castle this time, no? I mean, yes, Ganoff is doing a phenomenal job being the MVP of this game, but he can't carry the whole game on his shoulders. He needs some sort of assistances. He's running around, killing pikemen over and over again. Oh, boy. Welcome to the Champion Spotlight, featuring Balrog of Morgoth. He finished the job, and we kind of missed the War of Power for it, but it's fine. <laughs> now, at this point, Isengard is just like tilted. I think he's just pumping out units, even Uruks, giving them upgrades and then sending them forward, you know. I think it's kind of exhausting to play such a long such a long game like this. There was like the third EOD, the third Baldrock, and each of them have like 7 minutes cooldown. It means only the lead game has been lasting for like 21, 25 minutes. And I believe this game will last around about 50 minutes in total, which is super exhausting to play an RTS game this long. Uh, 
but I believe now he has got the game in the pocket because I don't see Gondor having the money anytime soon to rebuy the castle anymore, you know? He needs like still 3.5k and the second problem is he's, he has no army, that's the problem. He has 32 command points available from 250. Now that's the big issue right there, bro. He's killing stuff though, don't get me wrong with the Gandalf, I think Gandalf has like the highest body count in this game, Loki. It's a level 5 horse there and the level 4 horse there. But that's like with two battalions of horses, you can't win the game. That's not possible. And everything connects to the main issue I was mentioning before. So after the Gandalf has been recruited, uh, Gondor created some sort of space and momentum for himself. And this momentum should have been used to build up the marketplace. Because that will kind of give you the signal, okay, this game is going to go for the lead game. And Marketplace is one of the best investments into the super lead game situation. It will just pump in much more money for you. Your farms will give you more resources. Your blacksmiths will do give you more resources. And each time they give you more resources, they will also hit level 2 and level 3 faster. Because the EXP uh, resource building needs to reach the le next level is kind of tied up to the money it gives you. So, it, for example, the farm has to give you like 3,000 to get it to level 2 and 3,000 to get to level 3. But because the farm is giving you now more money with the marketplace, it will help you to reach the milestone also a bit faster, you know? All of that is very connected to each other. And now Isengard was able to buy the beast for himself. Towering up. Again, eco advantage in the lead game. Super lead game, eco advantage is very important because it's all about pumping out new armies, which Gondor couldn't and Isengard just could too. So that matters, that's what matters in the super lead game the most. But he has, um, I think he can kill him though. Like he has eagles, I don't know, when, he, when Gennaf dies there it would be like the worst thing ever. Going on Saruman, should go on the Lourdes. Oh boy. Oh EOD. And healed, like that's like pretty much the same situation like before. Like when you do this, why would you summon eagles then, you know? You can't get away, your stuff is broken. Oh! Get over here. You need to zoom in into this one, actually. <laughs> I like the sound he's making. Ah! Like here, you can't even destroy the base. Because you have no army to do that. Your two knights or one knight can't do the job, bro. He's going for the stable. I mean, he has now the money to buy the castle back, but there is no base uh, castle to be purchased anymore. And Gondor is gonna buy the outpost at the bottom side. Because he knows Balrog is about to come. And when you have only one outpost, Balrog is gonna finish off the game. You know, that's not a problem. Now, what all what Isengard needs to do, really, is to send, like, a huge army to the top side. Or to the bottom side. And then summon the Balrog on the opposite side. You know? So Balrog can easily take down, like ideally you want to do this on the opposite side of Gandalf. Like you want to send the army, when Gandalf is at the bottom side, you want to send the army to the top and summon Balrog at the bottom. Because it's war of power, you know, you can kill your army pretty easily. I mean double base dude for Aizen, that's pretty super strong. Give those Uruks their look. He is like at this point playing like hard army, just pumping out units <laughs> because there is no such thing as feeding anymore. The only thing you are feeding is, of course, experience points for the enemy units, which is also not the best thing ever because level 10 knights are super duper strong. And guys, my voice has to be annoying for you because I, I kind of feel it's different. That's why I, I, I was sick, you know. My throat hurts as I'm talking. So hopefully it's not too pitchy, not too annoying. Starting control. I'm a servant of the single fire, the wielder of the flame of Arnor. One HP left because he's level 10. He's tanky boy. And also because the Balrog wasn't ignited. 
The Ignite buffs not only his own auto attack damage by 200%, but also his abilities deal more damage. Breath fire. And the, the outpost at the bottom side, he's committing now to the base with, this, with his two Knights of Gondor. Um, three Knights of Gondor, actually, I take it back. They should deal a lot of damage here, by the way. Because the beast is super weak and you want to go for the Citta. I, I would like to use my Lightning Sword here on the Citadel, which is on cooldown, unfortunately. Uh, Balrog has no more time remaining, but there goes the outpost. Um, he's going to summon the Rangers and use the Cloud Break to stun the Pikemen. The Citta is super tanky against Horseman damage. And he also sent the weakest horse there, you know. To always send the... Uh, nah, he lost the level 7, I believe. That's the problem. Oh my god, if Gondor can win this game, I will do a backflip, you know. And I have never done a big backflip before. So if Gondor can win this game... Yes, sir. Oh, he's about to lose it. Go, Gandalf, do your magic, bro. No. <laughs> what a game, dude. What a game. I think, like, that was a good game, actually. Kind of ultra fiesta game. I hope, I, I'm pretty sure you guys will enjoy this game. If you did, you know what to do. Leave a like to this video. And also, before you leave, listen to me. This Sunday, meaning tomorrow, we will have a... Uh, uh, we will have the grand finals of the Ranger Cup tournament on my Twitch channel, Twitch TV slash Beyond Standards. You can find the link for it in the description down below. Tomorrow, 8 p.m. CET. So I would love to show, uh, see you guys in my live stream tomorrow. I hope you will do me, you will do me the favor and actually kind of tune in. You know, I would be super happy about it, and uh, talk to you tomorrow, guys. Peace out.